So speaking of, you know, moving to the West and noticing different things, how would you, um, how would you say Japanese judo is compared to Western judo? For example, how is the training in uh, Japan, the method, kumikata, what do you focus on most compared to um, what they do in the West, like uh, Estonia, Italy, France, uh, Georgia, Russia? How would you say Japanese judo is different from all these uh, styles of judo? Yeah, nowadays I already figured out uh, the differences in Poland. Uh, but not only comparing to the only Polish players, uh, whole European judo players and Japanese players. The, mm, basically, the differences are that the biggest difference is just the position. Because it's all about uh, kumikata, right? Ah, if okay. you fight in the style of the classic kumikata, it's just looking like it's seemed like just Japanese players. But if you're in close, uh, like Georgian or Azerbaijanese or uh, some of most many of European players, uh, they are really good in zero, dis zero distance. Uh, but we are not. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's all about the differences are about the position. But uh, of course, longer this with the longer distance like us, we can grip faster. Yeah, right? you if have the reach in the zero distance, and if you want to grip on the back or on the belts, it's harder because we are stand this you know, making distance and grip, we grip for earlier. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the differences and. Mm -hmm. Judo is traditional sport for Japanese, but of course we have sumo too, though uh, judo was also. But in different countries like in European, uh, they uh, mostly they have wrestlings or sambo, uh, chitaoba, chitaoba is from Georgia. Uh, yeah. uh, many of those are mostly looking like wrestlings and they have zero distance and they know a lot of methods how to get close, how to uh, lift the player, uh, the opponents in this zero distance. But we totally don't have so much the knowledge to fight with that players, like opponents. But in sumo, they know how close distance. Yeah. Can't you bring the sumo theory to judo since it's all Japanese? True. So we do sometimes sumo fights at the judo practices too. It's popular. Ah. But, yeah. So but you it, take off the jacket and you do a lot of sumo. Oh, we wear the jacket. We don't. We don't take off the jackets. Just we fight on the belt. Ah. Okay. 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 It's uh, it's popular to. But to do that too. Okay. We are not that good at that. Mm, yes. I see. I see. So, but for example, when I when I notice something when I watch whether it's Ono or Mariama or Inoue Koze uh, or Takeshi Sasaki, um, I noticed that they they wait for the right time and it comes like that. It com it's, it looks like he didn't even use a lot of force, even though they're very strong. Like when I see them training, their legs, their, their, when I look at your brother training, and I'm like, he's a monster. For those of you who don't know, his right. brother is Takeshi Sasaki. Um, his Uchimata in the All Japan went viral when he did the spinning Uchimata, when he beat the bigger opponent in All Japan. Um, he beat all the best right now. He already beat them. We are talking uh, world champion, Matt. Well, I... Oh, I don't hear the sound. No. Um, I'm pretty sure he beat Takanori Nagase in Japan in some tournament or in when they were training. So all of the best, he already beat them. He's 25. I'm sure he has a lot to show in, in the future. But uh, when I see him training, like he's lifting all these heavyweights, all know the same thing. But when I look at them in the tournament, it looks like they don't use that much force or because they're positioned well, it doesn't look like they're using much force. But in fact, they are using a lot of strength. But when I look at Russians and Georgians and how they lift, 
Mm-hmm. And they look like they're using a lot of force. Mm. I no. probably I just guess that for Japanese judo we don't have some we don't need so much uh how do you say muscles frame muscles uh, yes. the main muscles like uh, so much we don't need it we don't need them so much I guess uh, but uh, I and you said uh, that Japanese those uh, top players are waiting for the best moments but it's not waiting it's uh, leading to the ah best best circumstances awesome. they're like he's um reeling him in yes then when he's in the right position it's not like pulling pulling and lead to lead to, lead to the best uh, situation it's also psychologically technically ah. we have three of aspects psychologic physics and techniques and using those three uh, elements and we lead him lead his position to our the best position and uh, to to throw them mm. for example how do you do that psychologically let's talk about all three how do you do uh, that psychologically uh, but psychology just psychology i don't know i psychology element is always uh, in my head it's in my tactics the psychology element is always collaborated with physics or techniques, two of those. So when you say psychologically, it means that you put them in a stress position, they don't know how to attack or they don't know how to defend and then you attack them. How how do you, what do you mean by psychological tactic uh, then physics and then techniques? <laughs> I need to have my instruction um, in, <laughs> in physical judo instructions. I need to explain those. Mm. Uh, it could be a good commercial for my general instruction. <laughs> no, no, because um, I'm asking you this because uh, Japanese judo, it seems very basic when you look at it. Okay, he just did, for example, Oikoi Uchimata, sleeve, lapel, uh, but there's just so much hidden details in it. And now you say there's the psychological tactic followed by physics and then technique. So how do you like how what, what's uh, how do you do a psychological tactic, for example, before you put uh, any uh, the and then the technique? Oh, mm. I don't really recognize uh, there are many of only psychological ta- know, okay. element or tactics. It's always collaborated with psychology and physics. Or psychology and uh, oh, <laughs> uh, technicals, and it's all about the methods. But how to lead the methods uh, better is always uh, it's always composed by psychology, the opponent psychology, mm-hmm. and technique. Or okay. so when you say psych- uh, opponent psychology, for example, if he's going to too close or he's very too for going forward and or he's very aggressive or he's very like I have to study him before or I have to understand him before I mm. do the technique that's what that's what you're saying mm, I guess so and more detailed techniques we have yeah of course the the detailing for example you talked about uh, kumikata being an issue for oh, yeah. you yes that's um, an important part for us Yes, even though it's uh, like, for example, when kids start to do judo, they teach them uh, eri and so they and that's and like the basic. But you can do it in world championship. You can do it in the Olympics. But uh, they add so much uh, details uh, into it. You can't see it. For sometimes you you put the video, you repeat it, you put it very slow, and you you notice little things like twitch with the leg, twitch with the with the Eri, and then finally, like you don't even see it. For example, uh, Inoue Koze was against uh, Katabuchi. Mm. Katabuchi was very strong. He is, uh, he has like a left stance or Hidari stance. Mm. And Inoue, and he has his foot forward and Inoue 
Jose was having a very hard time to go in for Uchimata because he had his leg forward. So in a way, it did, just did like this, like with his hip and knee and with the lapel. And then Katabuchi just completely collapsed. He was like this, his legs were open, and then the Uchimata uh, came. And Neil Adams had to repeat it, make it very slow and explain it. Because if you look <laughs> at it, you don't, you don't see anything. I think uh, mm -hmm. most of top athletes or top judo athletes are good at cheating, I guess. Like <laughs> making, a, making a fakes. Making fakes. Feints. So, Feints or fakes? Fake attacks. Ah, okay, okay. Or fake tech, uh, fake strategies. Yes, yes. That's that's the example. Tricks. Psychology part. Ah, that's okay, okay, I understand. Like a trap. Okay, uh, and then because he had the grip, he was ready to attack. So he had the psychology when he did this, and Katabuchi was like, I already like surrendered almost, and then finally the technique, the Uchimata came and the Ippon. Mm. Cool. Okay. Perfect. So is the the tricks, the tricks in Japan like the the little stuff? Is it a big part of the training? No. No, because mm, most of the coaches they know only basics, mm -hmm. and we. Uh, mm, we think it out. We we think it out by yourself mm. uh, strategies or your your own tactics or okay. attacks or fake oh. attacks. Uh, so they coach only basics. Some of them are really how say, experts and they could tell us something is special things, special ta tacticals, like in Tokai University, but to the entering to Tokyo University, I didn't learn so much about uh, strategies. Mm. Just, uh, just Ayotsu and Kenkaiotsu, right? Do you know? Do you... Yeah, yeah. Uh, left, right versus right, right versus left. Yes, those differences, and they, when you get to know about those two situations, really biggest group, uh, it's really. Um, not specific. Uh, it's really about uh, two situations because in two situations, each of them, there are more detailed situations. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. The, like for example, if in Kekaitsu, if I have my arm uh, on top, it's different than if I have it inside. Um, if I grip uh, here, it's different when I grip the sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, if he if he's very like is he's too much like this, he doesn't want to give me the sleeve. There's a lot to go in. Um, what else? Uh, so it's it's mainly the basics. But after you go into the basics, you start to add a lot of details, which eventually, if you are smart and creative, you make them your strategy. Or if if those kind of Techniques could be has uh, inherited from some someone. 